preach this morning, if you'll turn with me to John chapter 10, John chapter 10, beginning with verse 27. If you want to read a good chapter, read John chapter 10. Man, that's a, it's an awesome chapter in the Word of God. And uh, so many times we quote John 10, 10. When we, uh, we want to quote scriptures, it's an easy one to remember. The thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, I've come that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. I had a preacher the other day challenge that verse, the way that we've interpreted for so long, that, we, that thief, we've called that thief the devil. And uh, he began to challenge, when you look at the context of this chapter, could that thief be more than the devil? Be those that come as wolves, sheep's clothing, amen? Those men that, that come and take positions and, and uh, challenge and come against what God said, but his people know his voice. I want to preach this morning on knowing God's voice. Knowing God's voice. John 10, verse 27. John chapter 10, verse number 27. If you're not already, could you please stand for the reading of the Word of God? Let's reverence God's Word for just a moment this morning, if you will. John 10, 27 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. Aren't you glad that He knows you today? And he said, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Stretch your hands towards heaven. Let's ask God to touch us this morning. The heavenly Father... We're so grateful today for the opportunity we have to be in your house, dear God. So thankful for your blessings, thankful for your presence, thankful for your mercy and your grace, dear God. We just want to enter into this time of the word, dear God. Praying, dear God, that you would bless us. Pray, God, that you would anoint us. Praying that you'd use us and flow through us like a river. I pray, Heavenly Father, that this word will find a good place in our heart today, dear God. Touching our hearts and our lives and our minds and our souls. And draw us ever closer to you. We praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. A couple of weeks ago, we preached out of Genesis chapter 3, Adam and Eve in the garden. As Adam and Eve was in the garden, the Lord had told them uh, about the blessings that he had for them. He walked with them in the cool of the day, and he told them all the trees and everything that was in the garden and told them that particular tree for them to leave alone. Then Satan came by to challenge what the Lord said. And that began to tell them that uh, they would not surely die as the Lord told them that. And we know the rest of the story that Adam and Eve, when Adam was told there by that servant, you shall not surely die, that they are still dying, that they, the man of Adam is still dying to this day. There was deliverance found for them. There was hope found for them. And for you and me, many years later, when that second man, Adam, came in the form of Christ, and we're celebrating that this week is uh, what he did for us. And that because of that second man, Adam, we are giving the victory. And that second man, Adam, uh, is known by so many names. We know him as Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. We know him as the Great I Am. We know him as Jehovah, God Almighty. Uh, we know him as the Prince of Peace. Uh, we also know him as the Chief Shepherd. And here in John chapter 10, uh, you hear, we read here about the Chief Shepherd, about the, the, the Shepherd of all shepherds, the Master Shepherd, that Shepherd leading us and guiding us. And he said here in this, our verse, our text today, uh, that my sheep hear my voice, uh, and I know them, and they follow me. Uh, but in order for us to hear his voice, we must first uh, know his voice. As we shared last week uh, in Psalms 29, uh, the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. Uh, glory and thunder through the Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. Uh, the voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Yea, the Lord breaketh Break of the cedars of Lebanon. Uh, he maketh them also to skip like a calf. Uh, Lebanon and Siren like a young unicorn. The voice of the Lord divideth the flames of, of fire. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. The Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord maketh the hinds to calf and discovereth the forest. And his temple doth everyone speak of his glory. Uh, the Lord sitteth upon the flood. Yea, the Lord sitteth king forever. The Lord will give strength unto his people. Uh, 
uh, the Lord will bless his people with peace. Uh, we found out through, through these verses of scripture uh, uh, the power is in God's voice. The majesty is in his voice. Uh, that the Lord in his voice will uh, divide the flames of fire that you may be going through. Uh, that his voice will divide the waves when, the, when the things seem to be over your head. When it seems like uh, you're drowning if you will. It seems like you're about to go under for that last time. Uh, the voice of the Lord is able to penetrate through that. Uh, as the writer of Isaiah said, when I walk through the waters, uh, I shall not be drowned. When I walk through the fires, they shall not burn me. Uh, and the voice of the Lord is able to take and through his power of that mighty voice of God, he's able to bring peace to you in the midst of your circumstance. Right. Is anybody in the house? Amen. Amen. That he will bring peace. He said, my sheep hear my voice. But in order for us to hear that voice, uh, he said he knows them. He knows his sheep. Uh, he said in another place, in another, uh, that they will not follow. But they will walk after me. They will follow after me. Uh, but it's about the most importance that you and I, uh, we, it's not enough for us to know that that voice of God is powerful. Uh, it's not enough for us to know and say, yes, amen. Uh, I believe and I agree. The voice of God speaks. Uh, uh, yeah. Many will say, amen. I believe that God still speaks to the preacher. I, I still believe that God still speaks to the song. I, I still believe that God's voice is powerful enough uh, to penetrate whatever's wrong. I still believe that God is the Almighty, the great I Am, uh, and the Jehovah God Almighty. Uh, but don't you know, even the devil of hell and his imps, uh, they believe and tremble. Uh, it's not enough for us just to believe it. Uh, it's not enough for us just to know that yes, there is a voice of God. Uh, yes, the voice of God is powerful. I know the devil is real. I know that he has power. I know that he still speaks to man today. But that don't mean I serve him. That don't mean I live for him. But I know the voice of my heavenly father. I know the voice of my shepherd. He knows me. And I know him. As Brother uh, Buster said this morning in Sunday school, I am a friend of God. Uh, he calls me friend. Uh, he's that friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Uh, he's that very present help in time of trouble. But it's important that we know his voice. He said that I know them, and they follow me. We follow him because we know his voice. We can look here in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. You can turn there if you like. I'm not going to read it in its entirely, uh, entirety. I preached on these verses of Scripture uh, just a couple months ago on would someone please turn the light back on. Yeah. But in these verses of Scripture, we find the young man, the child, Samuel. Uh, and Samuel is there, and he, he's the, there in the house of God. He's there with Eli. His mother came, and she dedicated him to the Lord. And when she dedicated him to the Lord, she left him there in the house of God uh, with Eli. And as he was left there uh, this night, he was laying here, and he heard a voice. Heard a voice. Begin to speak to him. Begin to call his name, Samuel. When he heard that voice, he jumped up and he ran into Eli because his purpose uh, was to minister to Eli. His purpose was to serve Eli. His purpose there uh, was to be a servant to Eli. When he heard that voice, and he ran to Eli. And Eli said, son, I didn't call you. Go and lay back down. It's bedtime. Uh, it's time to go to sleep. And he went back and he laid down. Uh, and when he laid down, he heard that voice calling his name again. Uh, but he did not. The scripture tells us, I believe, uh, along verse 7. Yes, verse 7 says, uh, now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. Uh, the voice of the Lord, the, the knowledge of God's voice had not been revealed unto Samuel. He never heard his voice before. Uh, he didn't know that voice that uh, was being spoken to him. Uh, he did not understand or comprehend. Uh, and as I wrote about this week, there was a language barrier uh, that was taking place. Uh, Samuel was that carnal young man, that man that was born in sin just as all of us were. Uh, and he heard something speaking to him. Uh, and it was the only other person that was there was Eli. So he figured it was Eli. And he ran back into Eli and he said, Eli, here am I. He said, son, I didn't call you. Go with me now. Samuel went and laid down again in that third time. He said, he came back. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, verse 8. And he arose and went to Eli and said, here am I. For thou didn't call me. You had to call me. He said, Eli, either you called me or I'm losing my mind. Eli, either you called me or either at this young age I'm already going crazy because I'm hearing voices speaking to me. And Eli replied to this young man. He said, thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord called the child. That's right. He 
Eli perceived the Lord. It was the Lord speaking to Samuel. He said, verse 9, Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be. If he call thee, thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant here. So Samuel went and laid down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant here. Speak, for thy servant here. We see a lot unfold in this story. We see a lot taking place in the story where Samuel, he did not know the voice of God. He did not as much hear about the voice of the Lord. He did not have a relationship with God, but God was calling his name. God was calling out for him, and the young man did not know that it was the Lord. He assumed that it was Eli because he had heard that voice so clearly speaking his name. And as he ran in there to Eli, Eli knew at uh, uh, the third time that it was the Lord that was speaking to him and he told him uh, how to respond. He told him what was taking place uh, and he began to tell him when he speaks again, uh, be sure that you answer him and say, here I am. Uh, speak to me, Lord. Uh, there's a lot of folks today that are hearing the voice of the Lord calling their name uh, as the preacher begins to preach or maybe when they lay down their head at night there uh, and the convicting power of the Holy Ghost uh, begins to prick their heart, begins to deal with them. God begins to speak to them. Begins to call out their name. Begins to uncover where they're at, where they're living. And just begins to deal with them. And they run and they begin to wonder, why is that preacher talking to me? Why is that preacher calling me? Why is that preacher or that teacher or whoever it may be calling out my name? Why are they doing that? He said, I haven't called your name. I didn't put this there specifically for you. I didn't speak your name. But it's God's voice is speaking to you. And just as Eli told Samuel, when God begins to speak to you, remember that day, friend, when you were sitting there on that pew minding your own business? Baby, as Brother Buster said this morning, we were playing with our cell phone or playing with a baby or whatever it may have been. And then we heard something. That preacher began to preach. All of a sudden, our attention was captivated by the Word of God. And all of a sudden, we began to feel something in our heart. It was as if God was speaking right to us. And we began to listen uh, and something begin to happen inside of us. Uh, that convicting power of the Holy Ghost uh, saying I want you to know me uh, and I want you to know my voice uh, and I want you to hear my voice this morning uh, because I'm calling out your name. Uh, so clear tenderly. Uh, Jesus may be calling you today uh, but you just don't know it because you don't yet know his voice. Amen. Wow. Need somebody to explain to you what that is. Right, yeah. That's the Lord. That's the Lord. We need to know his voice. That first encounter, Samuel learned the voice of the Lord. Eli told him, that's the voice of the Lord, son. And as the Lord spoke to Samuel, Samuel became one of the greatest prophets. Samuel became one of the greatest men of God. He anointed kings. He did great and mighty things, wonderful things. Why? Because he heard that voice of the Lord at a young age. And he said his response to the voice of the Lord. He could have, Brother Wayne, just closed his eyes and went to sleep. And said, that's not Eli calling me, so I don't have to listen to it. That's not Eli calling me, I don't know what that is. I'm scared to death of that. I don't want nothing to do with it. But no, he, he did just as Eli instructed him. He said, speak, Lord. Your servant heareth. Oh, Paul, when he was Saul, he heard a voice. He thought he was doing good for the Lord. But he was there on the road of Damascus and he was laying flat on his back. He heard a voice begin to call out his name. Saul, Saul. And he said, who art thou, Lord? He said, here am I. Speak to me. I want to know what you have for me. No matter where we're at, no matter where we're standing, uh, that voice of God is powerful. Uh, that voice of God is full of majesty. Uh, that voice of God will break the cedars of Lebanon. Uh, that voice of God is speaking to hearts and lives still today. Uh, no matter how sick cursed this world is, uh, no matter how dark it is, uh, we better know that the voice of God, uh, He still speaks. That's right. One songwriter said, and I know His voice. He still speaks. I know his voice. Samuel knew the voice of God. We begin to think about the voice of God, how he begins to speak. Brother Bob says he came to the Lord last summer. He told me, Brother Dan, I just want to hear God speak to me. He said, I just want to hear him speak to me. I said, Brother Bob, he's been speaking to you, brother, over and over and over again. You're growing in the grace and the mercy and the, the knowledge of the Lord because he's speaking to you. 
Yeah. You're, you're growing in, as a Christian because God is speaking to you. He's speaking to you through the Word of God. He's speaking to you, to you through the Sunday school teacher, through the song. When you're sitting over there on your front step uh, reading the Word of God, He's speaking to you. And in turn, you're speaking the Word of God to others uh, and, and helping others and encouraging others. Uh, he said, I understand all that, but I want to hear it. I want to hear it. He, he said, I, I, I laid there in my bed at night saying, Jesus, God. Come and speak to me. Brother, Brother Bob wants to hear that audible voice of the Lord speak to him. And the Word of God says he'll give us the desires of our heart. Maybe one day you'll hear that audible voice of God. I only recall maybe twice in my Christian walk that I've heard the audible voice of God. Did, did you hear that voice of God and you turn around? Yeah. Thinking somebody spoke to you? That's what Samuel experienced. That's what Saul experienced. So nobody else heard that voice, but he heard that voice. Sometimes God will speak in that audible voice. But when we begin to look at that voice of the Lord, the greatest example of the voice of the Lord, how God speaks to us is in 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11. The Lord spoke, said, Arise, go forth and sit upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind rent the mountains. And break in pieces of rocks before the Lord. Now listen here, it says the Lord passed by. The Lord did pass by. But he said there as he passed by, the great strong winds rent the mountains and break in pieces of rocks before the Lord. So the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. The Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. Yeah. We think about the voice of God, especially as Pentecostals, man, we want to be like a clap of thunder. Just an earthquake just take place. Oh man, we want, man, we just think the, the house is going to be in an uproar. As we sing, all of heaven came down, there was glory all around. Man, I just felt something. It was like a lightning bolt that hit me in the back of the spine. We, we're in those services and we think, I don't know how in the world anybody did not fall down in that altar and turn their life over to God. Could it be that God was not in that the voice of God's voice was not speaking to them in that thunder? Maybe he sent that thunder, that earthquake, all of that, the shape to break, to, to break some things loose in our lives. Maybe that wind blew to blow out the chaps. Maybe that earth quake, begin to quake, begin to break some things free in our life. Maybe it was all of that was taking place. The fire is there to burn out the draws and the impurities. God sent all that. God passed by all that. But that's not how he was speaking. Maybe God brings all of that to pass in our life to get everything out of the way so we can hear that still small voice of God begin to speak to us. Oh, we think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful. I think it's great. When God passes by, and the earth shakes. Man, the church just shakes. Yeah. I think it's great when God passes by. It says here, he passed by and these things happen. But he wasn't speaking to the church in those things. He wasn't speaking to the prophet in those things. It, it, it's good when God begins to do these things. But he has another purpose for these things. All of these things are to get to jump out of our way. To get, maybe to get our attention. Maybe to let us know. You notice when that weather alert comes across your screen. I won't give you that weather alert. I gave it one time. That, that test message one time. I preached as a test. Only a test. And I gave that weather alert. Boy, there's some annoyed people when I gave that to I won't give it to you this morning. But when that weather alert comes across that screen, it begins to make all that ruckus. Your screen goes blank, and it begins to beep, and it begins to do all that it does. It begins to tell us about a storm that is in our area. It's not that beeping. It's not all that noise. It's not all that racket. It's the message. But the message then comes across the screen. There's a tornado heading your way, or there's this going on, or that going on. Uh, maybe God brings that message, uh, that thing to us to shake us, that breaking, uh, that wind blowing, everything going on. Uh, but God had not spoke to you in that, but then all of a sudden He speaks to you with that still small voice of God. Zechariah said in Zechariah 4 and 6, and he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, oh, it would do us a lot good to remember that it's not by our might, our power, or our ability. We may hear some of the best preaching in the world. We may hear some of the best singing in the world. We may see men with great talent be able to do great things. 
uh, but it's not the preacher. Uh, it's not Brother Jamie's preaching that's going to bring you to God. Uh, it is not the great sing songwriters and uh, singers that begin to sing, the ones that play so wonderfully uh, on their instruments that's going to bring you to the Lord. Uh, it's not by our power. It's not by our mind. It's not by our ability. Uh, it's not by made by some man-made agenda. It's not going to come by my ability uh, to drag you down to an altar. Uh, it's not going to come by my ability uh, to tell you what you need to do. Men of God uh, can stand up with backbones of iron uh, and speak the truth of God's word. Uh, but it's not going to be because I stood up uh, with a backbone of iron uh, and preached the word of God uh, and preached the uncompromised word of God. That's not within my strength and my ability. Uh, it's not within my delivery. Uh, it's not whether I am successful in delivering the messenger of my thought flat on my face. Uh, it does not in that. It's not in my ability uh, or any other man's ability, he said, but it is uh, by the Spirit of God. That's right. No man cometh unto the Lord unless the Spirit draws him. That message is being preached and being brought forth, but it's not by the ability of the messenger. I have no ability within myself. I have no strength within myself. When men and women begin to think that they've got some kind of ability, that they've learned how to preach. I've met some, they've learned how to preach. They've learned how to move a crowd. They've learned how to move the emotions of the people. Uh, they've learned how to get into the pocketbook and the wallet uh, and, and to, to raise great offerings. Uh, they, they've learned how to deal with people's emotions and fill altars up. Uh, but the Spirit of the Lord was not drawing those people. Uh, they scared them to death or pulled on emotional strings or whatever it may have been. Uh, they've learned how to do that. My prayer is, Lord, uh, I'll never learn how to preach a sermon that will move a crowd. Uh, but I pray, Lord, that the anointing of the Holy Ghost uh, go before me and convict the hearts of people. Uh, I never want to learn how to preach a sermon, but I always want to have the message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The it. message that God's voice can begin to speak to the hearts of men. That men and women may know the voice of God. He told us to go out. The Great Commission is for us to go out and make disciples of all men. The way that we make disciples of all men is teach them to know the voice of God. <coughs> to teach them that God is going to speak to you even in that midnight hour. We talked about last week. Habakkuk 2 and 1 tells us, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. The writer here says, I'm going to stay on my tower. Why is he going to stay on the tower? Because I'm going to watch to see right. what the Lord will say. Yeah. Brother Jamie, I don't know the voice of God. I'm not sure if God spoke to me or not. The writer here in Habakkuk says to stand upon your watch. Right. Stay on that watch. What does that mean? It means to begin to, to look, to listen. Yeah. Say, God, I want you to speak to me. He said, I'm sitting here on my watch and I'm watching. What are you watching for? What are you waiting for? I'm waiting to see what the Lord will say to me. Yeah. I'm waiting to know what the Lord will speak to me. What did he say in the Beatitudes? He said, he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be free. He said, everyone in Revelation, he said many times, he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. This, what we would call minor prophet, Habakkuk, says, I will stand upon my watch, set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what the Lord will say unto me, and what shall I answer when I am reproved? He said, I'm going to sit there. He said, Brother Jamie, I want to know the voice of God. Well, watch. Stay on that tower. Right. Wait upon the Lord. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wait upon the Lord. Watch for the Lord. Listen for the Lord. What am I watching for? What am I listening for? See what he'll say to you and see what your response will be when he reproves you. When he reproves you. God is speaking today. Over the last few weeks, God has spoken to some hearts. Yeah. God has spoken to some hearts. And as this minor prophet said here, he said, I want to hear what the Lord has to say, but then I also want to hear what my response is going to be. What is your response going to be when you know God's talking to you? When you know without a shadow of a doubt, you've come to the conclusion that it's not the preacher who's talking to me. It's not mom that's talking to me. It's not dad or grandma or grandpa. That Sunday school teacher has been messing me up. It's God that's been speaking to me. That's right. It's God that's been 
been speaking to my heart. It's God that's been dealing with me. It's God that's been pulling at my heartstrings. And the writer here said, I not only want to know what he's going to say to me, but I want to know what I'm going to respond to. He said, I don't have any idea what my response is going to be, but I'm going to stay upon my watch, and I'm going to see what the Lord will say to me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. We talked last week about the voice of the Lord, how he is able, he's upon the waters and his glory thunders and his, and his uh, powerful and his full majesty and he breaks the seed. We talked about all of that last week. The writer said, I know all that. I've seen all that. But when God does speak to me and I know it's his voice, what's going to be my response? Yeah. What's going to be my response? How am I going to respond to the Lord? How am I going to heed to his voice? Well, I do is some and stick my fingers in the ears and say, no, I can't handle that, Lord. I can't handle that. I told you before, we preaching three years in the nursing home on Sunday morning. I was preaching there very early in my ministry there, I was preaching. There was a, a lady there that I began to preach. And as I began to preach, thank God none of you have done this to me since I've been here. <laughs> Please don't. But she began to yell out, shut up! Shut up! When my husband gets home, he's going to whip your... And she just, she was, she was out of her mind. She was, the poor thing was, it was her mind was gone. So I didn't think anything of it. The Lord began to show me something through that lady. I, I didn't have any hard feelings against her. I, I knew she was sick. I knew her mind was gone. I, I understood that. I just kept on preaching. But as I, I kept on preaching, I began to think about that, began to, to think about that poor lady as she began to yell out that. You know, there's some that that, that response is inside of them. They're, they're in their right mind. Yeah. Everything is right in their mind. Only thing wrong about their mind is they've got it caught up in the things of this world. Yeah. But as far as medical science would say, they're in their right mind. But in their heart, they're saying the same thing that that lady was saying to me that day. Shut up. I don't want to hear it anymore. God begins to speak to them. God begins to deal with them. That flesh wants to cry out that just as Legion did as he went there when Jesus came on that shore, that devil began to cry out. That thing that binds them and hinders them and prevents them began to cry out, I don't want to hear it anymore. I don't want to hear that. If he would just touch, they begin to stop their ears. As Stephen began to preach, it said they began to stop their ears. And when stopping their ears didn't work, they began to stone Stephen, began to throw stones at him. But what did Stephen do? He kept on preaching. He kept on delivering the word of God. There's many today that may be stopping their ears. There's many today that may be throwing stones at the preacher or the minister and say, I don't want to hear it. If I can shut him up, I will shut that voice up. And I won't have to hear it anymore. It won't draw me no more. It won't. They thought if, that, if we could kill Stephen, as they stoned him, if we could kill Stephen, that voice will stop. That conviction will stop. God will quit dealing with us. Many today think if we can just get that pastor uh, out of here, uh, I won't have to deal with this anymore. Uh, if we can just get that man out, if we can just get him to let that evangelist go, come just close out this revival, that preacher go down the road, uh, maybe this conviction will stop. Uh, it's not by power, friend. It's not by might. Uh, it's not by the, uh, the ministry of that, uh, that pastor or that evangelist or that teacher. Uh, it's not that. Uh, it's that voice of the Lord that's speaking uh, in every time you can find throughout history. Uh, you can find it there with Stephen. Uh, when they were taken and stoned Stephen and ripped his clothes off of him, they threw his clothes down at the feet of a man named Saul. Mm -hmm. Little did they know that that man Saul that was there that day, that was one of them that, that persecuted and ridiculed the Christians. He's the cheapest of all sinners I was. He didn't know that one day uh, that that voice, they did not know when they got rid of Stephen that one day uh, that that voice of God that was speaking through Stephen uh, was going to speak to Saul, uh, change his name to Paul, uh, and make him one of the greatest preachers, one of the greatest men of God uh, to ever walk the face of this earth. Uh, they might shut one man up, uh, but God's always got a man. Uh, God's always got a woman, a boy or a girl uh, that will stand up and speak out for him. Heard the story, Brother Harold Hanks shared the story. And I have a lot of confidence, Brother Harold Hanks, and what he says. He's been around this world. But Brother Hanks shared this story. I know a lot of preachers are 
You hear a lot of preacher stories, and I've used a lot of preacher stories that are good stories that don't know their fact. But Brother Hanks told me, told us this story one night when he was preaching. I'm pretty confident with Brother Hanks. Brother Hanks said that they were there in this service in China, the underground churches of China. And they have what they call whispering churches there. Because if they get caught having church, it means they're alive. They get caught with the Bible. It's their life. They can answer for that. They were in this church. They were having church. And they were having church. The soul see they have to move. They can't have church in the same place every week. They have to relocate each week. And they relocated. Week after week, they were there. Soldiers came busting in. Say it, tell you this, because I'm telling you, God will always have a voice. Soldiers busted in. When they busted in, they took that picture they had there of Christ off the wall. If they had that picture there, they took it down. They held that gun to them. It started with pastor and, then, and different men in the church, different monks. They took that picture down. When they held that picture there, they said, spit upon it. Spit upon this picture. When you spit upon this picture, you're denouncing Christ and telling him that I don't serve you anymore. Because if you don't, it's going to be your life. But the soldiers told them it's going to be your life. One after one. One after the other, they came through. They spat upon that picture. They weep. And in their hearts, no doubt, they were apologizing. They were repentant, but they cared for their life. And they began to spit upon that picture. And as they spat upon that picture, they denounced Christ. The, the minister and all the ones in that church. Story told. They got to this one 12 year old girl. They put that picture there and they told her, Now spit. She grabbed that picture and she took her little skirt and she began to wipe all the spit of those other men and women and others that were there. She began to wipe it off. She said, oh, I could never announce my Christ. Oh, I could never announce. Lord, I thank you for what you've done for me. And what you've done for me, I'll tell others. What you've done for me, I will not denounce. What you've done for me, I'll never forsake. She wasn't going to announce it. You've been so good to me, Lord. Cost her her life. But God will always have a voice. Right. When it seems like no one else will speak up for God, God will have a voice. When the Levite and the priest passed by, that man there in that ditch, God used the most unlikely in that good Samaritan. God's always going to have a vessel to flow through. God's going to always speak. So don't think when that preacher hushes, when that revival is ended, when that evangelist is called, God will quit dealing with me. No. No. His voice speaks. When you know His voice, you know His voice, it's a wonderful thing. As He said, John 10, 27, My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. And they follow me. And they follow me. He said in another place, there's sheep of another pasture. There's sheep of another pasture. When he talked to Peter, we talked about this a few weeks ago when he talked to Peter in the last chapter of John. He said, Peter, lovest thou me? Yes, Lord, you know that I love him. He said three times, said, feed my sheep, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. He was telling him, feed those that are in the church. Feed those, those baby Christians. And then he said, feed those other sheep. Mm -hmm. They're not of this pasture. Feed those <laughs> other sheep. Those, what we call the black sheep of society. He said, feed them my word. Give them my word. And when they know my voice, when they know my voice, they hear my voice. I know them. And they're going to follow me. God knows you this morning. He knows right where you're at. Right where you're at. Whether you're a child of God, worker of the church, backslider, or you've never had an experience with him at all, God knows you this morning. He knows right where you're at this morning. And he wants you to hear his voice as he begins to speak to your heart today. Sister Angie, will you come and play something for us this morning? He said in verse 28, And I give unto them eternal life. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never 
perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. God's speaking today to hearts and lives and minds. Do you know his voice? Maybe God's calling you for the first time. Maybe God's calling you into a work, into a ministry. Do you know his voice? Maybe God's calling you into a deeper depth. Say, don't be saved and satisfied. Be saved and sanctified. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Something God's calling for the first time. He's dealing with you to repent of your sins. To live your life for him. Some God is calling you home. You knew, once knew what it was like to hear the voice of God speak to you. He was giving you eternal life, and it was great. It was a wonderful road, but you was home. But you turned and walked away. God's speaking to you this morning. Come on, home. And there's some here this morning. God's calling you to a deeper day. God's calling you deeper. Saying, get out of those ankle-deep waters, those waist-deep waters, loin-deep waters. Get out there in borders this morning. Deep. Calling out to deep. God is speaking to your heart. Some this morning, God's called you into ministries. God has dealt with your heart. Called you to sing, play instruments, preach, teach. You've dabbled at it. You've done it here and there. But you know. God's voice has not left you alone. He said, I'm calling you. Do what I called you to do. I remember that night when the Lord called me into full time ministry. Standing there on that front row of 103rd Street Church of God. He said, Work while as yet day, for night cometh when no man can work. He's 22 years old. 22 years old. I attempted. From then, I went out. Evangelize. Three years. I even had one pastor's wife, a preacher's wife, tell me, Brother Jamie, maybe you've had the highlight of your ministry. You know, Jesus only had three and a half years. Maybe that's all you have. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's all God wants. Well, that really encouraged me. But my evangelism dropped off. But God still called me. I didn't change the fact that God called me, that God spoke to me. I went to work. Still preached every time an opportunity came available. Working that job. Making good money. The Lord bless me. The Lord bless me. I got they got married. Started preaching some more revivals. Met Sister Amy during the revival. Got married. Still preached a few revivals here and there. And the voice of God saying, I've called you deeper than this. I've called you for more than this. Take up your cross. Follow me. Follow me. It took almost 12 years before I laid it all down. It took me, Brother Wayne, being flat on my back is what it took. It took me losing everything. It felt like I was about to lose it all. I said, okay, God, I hear what you're saying to me. I understand it completely now. You're going to take care of me. Your word was true when it said, You shall supply all of my need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Not by Duval Pilot, MWI, or any of those other companies that I work for. By Christ Jesus. Maybe God's calling you deeper. God called me deeper. He supplied my every need. It amazes me how God has worked things out for me. He made a way for me. Because he said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. And they follow me. It may lead you into full-time ministry. It may lead you to a mission field. It may lead you to a desert somewhere. No telling where it may lead you. But do you hear his voice? Do you hear his voice calling you this morning? Calling you maybe into the realm of the unknown. That scares us to death. Abraham, where are you going? I don't know. But I've heard the voice of the Lord say to go. Whether 
where God's calling you for the very first time to an all of repentance. Calling you to come home. Calling you into the greater depths. Maybe even calling you to the ministry. Hear his voice as he speaks to you today. Leave here saying, I know that I've heard the Lord speak to me. And when you know that you heard the Lord speak to you, no matter what anybody else says, it won't matter. You'll keep serving Him. No matter if you see everybody around you falling off, going back. No, I heard God speak to me. What, Brother Jamie, that convinced me? It wasn't my brothers, my sisters, my family or friends or anybody else that convinced me. I know what I heard. I heard God speak to me. I heard His voice speak to me. When you know that you know that you know, there's no turning back. No turning back. Many people try to convince me over the years to turn back. You don't have to keep preaching. God understands. You don't have to keep doing that. God understands that you've got to do what you've got to do. But I understand something greater than that. And my God said He will supply every one of my needs. He said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. His voice has been speaking to you not only this morning, several weeks, several weeks, maybe even months, some maybe even years, God's been speaking to you. Pushed you back. Maybe you stopped those ears. Maybe you said, No, I don't want to hear. Maybe you was even reverent and said, Lord, I hear you calling me, but remember what happened? And the Lord said, No, I don't remember what happened. Because I put it under the blood. Lord, remember? See, we talk about Peter as he was sitting there across that fish dinner from the Lord. Peter remembered how he denied him, how he failed him. Peter remembered how he failed God. Brother Wayne all Jesus remembered it as he went out and wept bitterly and repented. That's the last thing he remembered that he did. Not that he denied him three times. But Peter, my calling for you is still the same. Follow me. Follow me. No matter how deep you've gone in this world, no matter how far you've gone, what habits you've taken up and picked, it, picked up, God's still saying it. Follow me. And I'll make you fishers of you. Will you stand with me this morning? And he, he said, I, verse 28, give unto them Eternal life. They shall never perish. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Guess who you are this morning? Guess who I am this morning? Hey, I'm Mr. Whosoever. You're Mr. Miss Whosoever. Not his will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. If you've heard God's voice speaking to you this morning, or over the past few weeks or past few months, really wasn't sure what that voice was, but now you have a clearer understanding. Hey, that's God speaking to me. Please respond. What will your response be? You're going to respond one way or the other. God's speaking to you today. Everybody in this house that God's speaking to, you're going to respond. Some said, no, Brother Jamie, I'm not responding today. I'm going to wait. You will respond. You come to that altar, you're responding, yes, Lord. When you turn and walk out that back door, your response is, no, Lord. Not me. Not today. No, Lord. No, 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 Brother 